By the end of this video, you're going to have no problem at all with evaluating piecewise functions. And in about 30 seconds, here's how this video is going to help you do that. We're going to evaluate two piecewise functions in this video. So the first one, that's going to be a smaller piecewise function, and we're going to do these three evaluations. And then we're going to have a larger piecewise function. This one has four functions in it, and we're going to be doing these four evaluations. And after we do all that, I'll give you a problem to try and answer in the comments. And by that point, it should honestly be breezy. And if you're looking for the notes for this video, see so if something to review, you're in luck because I've went through and I've made printable notes for this video. And if you want those printable notes, I'm going to have them linked right in the description. Also in the description, I have an extra video linked where you and I will go through and solve four more of these evaluating piecewise functions problems. And also we'll be doing eight problems with graphing piecewise functions as well. So yeah, link in the description for that extra video. So starting with this first problem here, we're given this piecewise function and we're starting by trying to find f of negative four. So f of negative four, looking at that, we can see that we have a negative four plugged in for x. And what that means is we're looking at where x is equal to negative four. So let's look at this piecewise function and see which of these conditions that actually matches up with, because that'll tell us which function that we're going to be plugging into. And looking at this first condition here, is that gonna work? Well, yeah, because x is negative four and negative four is indeed less than two. So right away, we found the function that works. We know we're gonna be plugging into the negative x plus five function. So we're gonna write negative x plus five here, but we're going to plug in that negative four for x. So instead of being negative x plus five, it's gonna be negative, negative four plus five. And make sure here that you realize this is going to be two, there's two negatives here. One comes from the negative on the x, and then one comes from the negative that's on the four. That's why there's two negatives. You don't want to get that messed up. So since there's two negatives right next to each other, you can make them both positive. And then you just have four plus five, which is nine. So that's the first one done. Now, what about f of eight? Well, here, x is now equal to eight. So let's look at which of these conditions is good with x being eight. And looking at the second condition here, x being greater than or equal to two, we know that eight is greater than or equal to two. So that works. We're gonna use our second function here, the two x minus two. So we're gonna write out two x minus two, and instead of it being two times x, we're plugging in an eight. So it's gonna be a two times eight minus two. Now two times eight, that's 16, minus two, that's 14. So there we go. Now our second one's done. And lastly, we have f of two where two is now equal to x. And so let's look at our conditions. Which one works with x being two? Well, we have two in both of these cases, but in only one of them can x actually equal two. In the first condition, x can only be less than two. It can't equal two. But in the second condition, x can be greater than two, yeah, but it can also be equal to two. That's what that little bar means underneath the greater than sign, greater than or equal to. So x being two works with that lower condition, the second one. So we're gonna use the two x minus two function again. And so we're gonna write two x minus two with the two plugged in for x. And so we have two times two minus two. Two times two is four, and four minus two is two. So there we go, problem one is now done. Now moving on to problem two here, here we have a much larger piecewise function and we want to start off by finding f of five. So f of five, that's where x is equal to five now. Which condition is that going to work with? Well, I'm going to look at the bottom here because I see that the, the highest number in all of these conditions is three. And this condition is x is greater than or equal to three. And I know that five is greater than or equal to three. So I already know what function I'm using. I'm gonna use this bottom one. And so I'm gonna get one third times, it's not gonna be a three, that's not the number that I'm putting here. It's not the number on the condition, I'm putting in the number that x is equal to. X is equal to five here. So don't make that mistake, because I may or may not have done that before. So here we have five times one third, that's five thirds. And we can get common denominators between this and the eight. So all we'd have to do is multiply that eight by a three over three to get threes in the denominator. 8 times 3, that's 24. And then we have that 3 in the denominator. And that's going to give us 
5 plus 24 is 29, so we get 29 over 3. And we can't simplify that anymore, so that's our answer. Now what about f of 1? Well, for f of 1, x is equal to 1 now. And, well, which of the conditions does that work with? Well, I see a 1 in both of these, but only in one of these can x actually equal 1. And that's going to be in this top condition here. x can be less than or equal to 1. So we know we're going to use the second function, 1 plus x squared. So instead of being 1 plus x squared, we're plugging in this 1. So it's 1 plus 1 squared. And that's just 1 plus 1 squared is 1, so it's 1 plus 1, and that's 2. So now we have f of 2, and for that, that's x equals 2. So 2, that falls in between 1 and 3, and so that's going to be our third condition there. So it's going to be we're going to be using our third function, and our third function is just 6. There's actually nowhere to plug in this x equals 2 because there's no x's in this function. And that's fine. Sometimes you're going to run into that. That's okay. So 6 is our answer here. And I do have one more for us to plug into. It's not done yet. We have f of negative 4. And there, x is equal to negative 4. So now you tell me, which one of these functions are we going to be using when x is equal to negative 4? Think about that for a sec. Well, if we look at our conditions, there are two conditions that have a negative 4 in it. And, well, the second one says that x is greater than negative 4. And if you're wondering why I say greater and not less than, it's because you can read inequalities backwards. That's something you might not have known about inequalities. So you can read this as negative 4 is less than x, or you can read it as x is greater than negative 4. That's just something about inequalities. But you'll notice there's no bar underneath, so x cannot equal negative 4. In this top condition, though, x can be less than or equal to negative 4. And so we're going to be using this top function, the absolute value of 2x plus 7. So the absolute value of 2x plus 7 is what we're using. And instead of an x here, we're plugging in negative 4. And so now let's just figure this out. We have 2 times negative 4, that's negative 8. And negative 8 plus 7 is negative 1. And the absolute value of negative 1 is just 1. Right? Remember, the absolute value is going to take away this negative here. So that is how to evaluate piecewise functions. And if you feel pretty good with that now, then here is a problem for you to try and answer in the comments. Here, I have a piecewise function, a small one. There's only two functions in here. And I'm asking you for these evaluations, f of negative 4, f of 0, and f of 3. So try that problem out. Let me know what your answer is in the comments. And if you have any questions on anything we talked about in this video, again, let me know in the comments and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Now remember, I do have that extra video where you and I will go through and do four more of these evaluating piecewise functions problems. And we'll also do eight problems of graphing piecewise functions as well. So if you're interested in that, especially if you have a quiz or a test coming up on this kind of stuff and you're looking to review, definitely check out that link in the description down below. Lastly, make sure that you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. Look, we're almost to 100K. We're getting there. We're getting closer by the day. And to help with that, I've really just been trying to record as many videos as possible. So right now, you know, I'm, I'm working on Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Pre-Calc all that stuff. So you subscribing to this channel is really just a nice way of supporting me while I'm trying to go through and crank out these videos for you guys. So yeah, that's going to do for this video guys. And I'll see you soon.